Right, police in France are continuing to monitor the streets to enforce a ban on protests against cartoons mocking the Prophet Muhammad. On Saturday, 21 people were arrested when they attempted to stage a small rally near a Paris mosque, where a week ago an unauthorized demo saw 150 people detained. And let's now talk to independent journalist Robert Harness. Robert Harness, welcome to RT. So it's been reported some women wearing veils were arrested when it was suspected they were intending to take part in a protest. Has the government basically given the police license to detain anyone based on how they look? Well, it's to be fair to the government. I always hate to be fair to the government. But uh, the, th these are demonstrations that have not been approved by the Ministry of the Interior. You will be familiar with the problem. Uh, and therefore, the government has said, you can't do that. It doesn't matter whether you're wearing a veil or not. Uh, the government is in a very difficult position because of their policy in Syria and because of their various inconsistencies on uh, Islam. Uh, so they have to crack down. They have to make sure there is no uh, over-excitement uh, as a result of this uh, 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 disturbance that has taken place in the Muslim world, that's putting it rather mildly, uh, and of course it, the situation has been exacerbated by a French newspaper called Charlie Hebdo, which is a satirical newspaper, anti-religious, which has published a series of um, anti-Islamic cartoons of a rather tasteless nature. Right, and so why has Paris allowed the publication of the cartoons, which many seen as a provocation against Muslims, but then banned people protesting against them? It seems there's freedom of speech for only one side here, doesn't it? Well, I, I think that's that's fair comment. I mean, the, the the rules in France are that you can do and say, well, not do, sorry, you can say anything you like about a religion as long as it's not actually positively defamatory. And the, and the, if it is defamatory, then you go to the courts and you you try and get a criminal conviction against the people who do it. But Charlie Hebdo have a record of publishing this sort of thing. It goes back about ten years, and of course they're now in 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 a bind because if they stop now when they must know that what they're doing is inflammatory, then everybody's going to say, ah, you're caving into Muslim pressure. And if they go on, people say, you're throwing petrol on the fire. But of course, what one has to remember is that every time they do this sort of thing, and it's not the first time, they, they printed the Danish cartoons as well. Every time they do this sort of thing, their circulation doubles. Yeah, you mentioned earlier the French policies in the Arab world, and we've seen Muslims protesting against the French cartoons across there. So, but is it just the satirical publications, or are there wider ways France has sparked anger? No, it's 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 the, the, it's clear that Muslims are very upset by what has happened, but the bulk of Muslims in France are reasonably moderate. The extremists did demonstrate a week ago in, in, in a place where they knew perfectly well they had no right to demonstrate, and they held a prayer meeting as well. Prayer, public prayer meeting is a very sensitive issue in France, which is a lay republic where religion should have no place. So they knew they were acting provocatively there quite deliberately. But on the other hand, although the authorities have put out a huge, heavy police presence, their reaction has actually been quite mild because although they arrested 100 and so people last week, only one of them was given a prison sentence. And that was, uh, I think, for two months firm and three months suspended. And the judge who deals with these matters may decide that he shouldn't be in prison anyway. And he was allowed to walk out of the court. So it's they're, they're playing it both ways. They don't want to enrage the, the people, the alleged five million people of Muslim backgrounds in France. That's a lot of, a lot of people. On the other hand, they, they've got to stick to their line that they allow free speech, which, of course, is only allowed in France on certain subjects. Yes, briefly. Again, France has been supporting rebels in Syria. It started the bombing campaign in Libya, which saw many civilians killed. Do you Absolutely. think France will reconsider its foreign policy in the face of such anger? Well... It's, uh, we've talked about this before on your program. All French leaders, like most European leaders, are in the, in the NATO bind. They, they've committed themselves to NATO. They're tied up with NATO. France, under Sarkozy, committed itself more strongly than at any time since General de Gaulle to NATO. And there is the usual sort of stick and carrot from, from Washington. So that, there's that aspect of it. Uh, and also, they want to appear to be punching above their weight 
to use a British expression, in international politics because they want to keep their veto in the United Nations. So they're in a difficulty. On the other hand, there is a growing feeling in left-wing circles that the government's policy is nonsense. You cannot support terrorism on Monday and condemn it on Tuesday and then support it again on Wednesday. Um, and the, it is noticeable for all sorts of reasons, not just this, but Francois Hollande's popularity has plunged at a record speed. He, he, his popularity rating fell 11% in one month. There's been nothing like it since General de Gaulle declared independence uh, for Algeria uh, and uh, President Chirac lost the referendum on uh, the uh, European treaty. I mean, these were major events. This is just general unpopularity of the new president. Robert Harness, independent journalist, thank you very much indeed for your time, sir.